everyone. Welcome to the Drinks with Jess podcast. This is Jess Brandis, your host, and this is where we bring the LGBT community together and its allies to share in each other's missions and help each other grow. It is a rainy weekend by the time that we're recording this, but I am very excited for today's show. Before we get to that, if you are new to listening or watching this show, please go on to at brandisenterprises.com slash be hyphen the hyphen voice. Not only for information about this show, but all the others on the Be The Voice podcast network, including Podcast Penetration, Overrated, Underrated, The Dating Pool Podcast, Pop The Question, and our new gaming show. If you're a gaming Star Trek Comic-Con type of fan, Toasted Muffin Geekery is for you, so please make sure to check those out. You can also connect with me via all of my social media links. You can find them on dwjphl.com as well as any of the archive shows. But today I am very excited because, as you know, I am a political junkie. And no, we are not talking impeachment today, although maybe it will come up in conversation. But I have the Democratic candidate for the Delaware State House of Representatives, 27th District, that is covering Newark area. This is Eric Morrison. Eric, how are you, sir? I am great. I am great. And, and let me apologize first for how I look. Actually, as soon as we get done here, my team and I are going out to knock some doors. So but well, thank I, you for having me. You and your team better have a lot of umbrellas. Uh, I know. Yes, yes. It, it's, you know, it's really nice. People really appreciate it, actually, when you're out in the bad weather because mm-hmm. they know how dedicated you are, you know, mm-hmm. so... So, but yeah, we knock doors, rain, shine, snow, sleep, we do it. Wow. How many, how many doors do you think you've knocked on so far? Um, we track that. So um, oh, wow. we, de- we declared, um, and I, when I say we, because we're a team, you know, and I truly think of that, you know, it's about our campaign and, and, and everybody. Um, so we declared our candidacy, my candidacy mm-hmm. back in May 1st of last year. We mm-hmm. started knocking doors July 4th weekend of last year. And so far, we have hit over 3,400 doors. Wow. That's yeah. incredible. Now, since you, you launched and started off knocking on doors July, July 4th weekend, did anybody invite you in for some food? Uh, people have. People, you know, especially as it gets cold, as it's been colder, people mm-hmm. invite you in for coffee or what. One, one family asked me for if I wanted to sit down for dinner. And, you know, so a lot of times people, and, and especially too when it's really hot, they'll be like, mm-hmm. do you want to come in the air conditioning? And they offer you water. And so, yeah, people are really nice. I, I, I think that's the fantastic part about communities. And I always say, that I wish people would realize it's not just about a presidential election or vice presidents. It really comes down to your local representatives, senators, even your local mayors, councilmen, where changes have to start. Now, what I find is interesting about you is that you are, you would be the first openly LGBT representative, state representative for the legislature. That's very true. Yeah. Um, so we did in the in the state senate we did have um senator karen peterson who she actually was not elected as an openly lgbt person Mm -hmm. uh but when we were having the when we were working through legalizing marriage here in delaware Mm -hmm. which my opponent voted against by the way but when we were working on that back in 2013 um she actually came out while she was a sitting senator and then Mm -hmm. i don't think she ran for re-election so Mm -hmm. you're right we've never had an lgbt person in the house of representatives and in all of the legislature we've actually never elected an openly lgbt person Wow. And it wasn't Delaware one of the first states to recognize same-sex marriage? We were pretty early, yeah. It was mm-hmm. back in 2013. It was mm-hmm. civil unions before that, and then right. marriage came through in 2013. Now, I, I find that interesting. I mean, Delaware obviously was the first state of the union. Delaware is a lot of firsts, or yeah. very close to, to first for a lot of things. Now, I know that we have issues up here in Pennsylvania, even in Philadelphia, where now that we have marriage legalized, you can still get fired from your job if you get married. In fact, I've had friends who have gone through that, which is, you know, it kind of gives you a little, a little hopeless feeling that things are not moving as forward as they are. Now, do you have that situation in Delaware or are there protections for LGBT in Delaware? There are a lot of protections, but here's what bothers me, and, and, and I know you'll know what I'm talking about. You know, a lot of times, even when you have the protections in place, 
mm-hmm. it still happens. Bad things still happen. And, and there's always that fear of retribution. There's mm-hmm. always that fear of, of, of you know, retaliation. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of people aren't out, aren't out at work. Uh, for mm-hmm. a lot of different reasons. So even when you have those protections in place, I think we still have to really keep fighting hard and be out and be out there and be vocal because even when you have those protections in place, the prejudice is still there and sometimes even the the, the protections just, you know, aren't enough. Right. And you going from, from door to door and meeting people in the community, have you felt any adversity or or backlash even i mean because you have to be very public very open very talkative i mean have you come across people that were just very uninterested in talking to or having an lgbt representative right and, and and that's a good question. So, um, you know, and it's certainly like I don't walk up to a door and say, hi, I'm gay because, you know. I, I think I, that would be great. I think you that should. would be great. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, for me, it's about all of the issues as a whole. Mm-hmm. Um, I am not. Here, put it this way, and I recently wrote an editorial for our statewide newspaper about how we need more diversity in our state legislature. Mm-hmm. 76% of our state legislature, although we've made gains recently, they are still straight white men. Mm-hmm. And so for me, I think elected bodies should look like the people they serve. But mm-hmm. at the same time, I don't want anybody voting for me because I'm gay. I want people voting for me because they believe in our platform. They believe mm-hmm. in my history of community service. They believe in, in my vision, you know, our vision for Delaware. Mm-hmm. Um, so with that being said, though, you know, we've had uh, at doors, you know, when I point out that, that my six-term Democratic incumbent opponent voted against same-sex marriage, that in twenty that in twenty seventeen he refused to vote yes or no on a bill banning conversion therapy for Delaware's LGBT minors. A lot of them are just floored. They're absolutely right. floored that in this day and age a Democrat would do that. Mm-hmm. There have been a you know the, I I do remember one house. It was funny and I remember well because I actually she pulled up in the driveway as I'm knocking on her door and I went to talk to her and she was sitting in her car and she actually said to me at the end after my spiel and talking about cannabis mm-hmm. legalization and a woman's right to choose which mm-hmm. my opponent also opposes um, she said I'm on board with you everything on everything except same-sex marriage which which I found interesting but you know it, it is what it is you know mm-hmm. and, and so well let's let's talk about this because you are running against the incumbent democrat mm-hmm. which i applaud you for because i i feel like i don't see that often you know running against the incumbent of the same party so let's talk about this because you've had a lot of coverage with your campaign now due to the fact that the incumbent who is supposed to represent the democratic party really doesn't so how do you see his campaign right. to try and keep his seat right. not showing that that true diversity, that true democratic side? I mean, when I look at 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 the Democratic Party, I see a diverse party, different yes. ages, different genders, different orientations, different religions. I see it as the melting pot that the United States was supposed to be. Mm-hmm. But when you see a a Democrat who is currently holding the office that doesn't have those qualities, was there ever any question, whether it was from you or anybody in your campaign or even the community, that says, why is this guy still here? Well, according to him, um, he thinks that we live in a very conservative district. Mm-hmm. Um Now, I will say when he was elected about 12 years ago, the district looked a bit different. Mm -hmm. Um, It's a hugely growing district. Mm -hmm. Um, We actually have five housing developments being built right now. Unfortunately, they're not really affordable housing, and we're not keeping up with infrastructure, and we need to address that. Mm -hmm. But we have had so many young people move in, very diverse people move in. Mm -hmm. Um, We've had people move in a lot from surrounding states. Okay. Um, so our, our district has become much more diverse mm-hmm. and, and progressive, especially as we hit the doors, we know this. 
Um, and, and that is one of the re real reasons that kind of sparked my run was it's very upsetting to me. And let me say this, we actually have twice as many Democrats in this district registered mm -hmm. as Republicans. We have more independents registered than Republicans. So to say it's a conservative district, you know, and in my mind, you know, with such a heavily Democratic district, we deserve a state representative who stands up for the most basic tenets of the party, like LGBT right. equality, a woman's right to choose, mm -hmm. environmental protections, mm -hmm. public schools. And, and that's something we hear a lot at the doors, too, is that people are disappointed about that and they're ready for a change. Yeah, I, I think a lot of communities are getting to that point. I'm I'm floored by the fact that the the incumbent that you are challenging has such i'm just and i'm going to say this loosely has such a conservative slash republican mindset when it comes to things such as roe versus wade lgbt rights uh you know medical marijuana or cannabis yeah. that is dumbfounding to somebody like me who has normally seen if you are on this side of the party this is what you believe in right you know and it it just doesn't seem like he was running with the right platform right and <laughs> and we had you know i was a i was a um, along with him actually i was a um, delegate to the state party convention back in 2016 mm -hmm. and 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 the party reformed a new platform and i was part of working on that some and of course voting on it mm -hmm. and it's ironic to me that he doesn't adhere to i mean very clearly our state um, platform supports lgbt equality and supports mm -hmm. um you know um uh, abortion rights and for mm -hmm. him to go against that party platform i, I agree it's it's mind-boggling to me and two you know it, it's not just for me about um, those those basic tenets it's about modern ideals like reform in the areas of criminal justice and mm -hmm. health care and right. educational funding mm -hmm. and and so many things like that so you know it's not just about the basic tenets of the party it's about taking that next step to other things that people care about absolutely and it's about the community for sure well what we're going to do eric i love uh chatting with you about this so i want you to stick with us uh yes. for the rest of you out there we are going to take a short break and we'll be back with more drinks with jess stay tuned the Drinks with Jess is making a big splash. It's time to join forces and step outside of our comfort zones. There is strength in union. It's time for people to tell their stories and make a difference. That is what we aim to do. The Drinks with Jess podcast is where we bring the LGBT community and its allies together to share each other's missions and help each other grow. Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Time bringing you amazing guests that cover a wide variety of topics and are inclusive to all cultures and communities. Join us on this amazing journey. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Drinks with Jess podcast. Again, this is Jess Brandis, your host, and this is where we bring the LGBT community together and its allies to share each other's missions and help each other grow. I am joined still by Eric Morrison, who is the Democratic candidate running for the Delaware State House of Representatives. He is also the first openly LGBT candidate who is going to be elected in the state of Delaware. And I like to put it out there like that because I, I feel like there needs to be a change after hearing about who you are running against. And we went through this back and forth when we initially had contacted each other. But it is time for a change. And I think between the last midterm elections and what we're starting to see now, the community, not just the LGBT community, but the United States of America communities mm -hmm. want change. They've had enough of the crap, and they want to see some type of movement forward. Because as of right now, whether it's a, a, a House member or a senator or the administration, and I say that loosely because I don't believe that they are our administration. I still think it's like a really sick dream. Yeah. Um, actually, nightmare. But it seems like they're taking steps backwards on all the progress that we've made, whether it be for LGBT rights or abortion rights or even like the environmental protection rights. Even even clean clean drinking water. Clean I know drinking water, smog, all of it. Absolutely. I mean, it, it seems as if everything that this country and those who have 
led this country, it's like gone to waste in three short years. So on a more local level, at the state level, do you see that happening right now in Delaware as you're campaigning, that there have been steps kind of taking things backwards from all the progress that you've made in the state? Um, I don't think so. Um, the only way I see that is when federal things affect, you know, that. So, mm -hmm. for example, um, I attended an event recently for Planned Parenthood of Delaware, and they have taken a big funding hit because mm -hmm. Trump has required that um, anyone offering, um, you know, or referring um, uh, uh, women for possible abortion services that they do certain things that essentially discourage them from doing it. Yeah. And so they said, if you want federal funding, you have to do these things. And mm -hmm. a lot of the Planned Parenthoods are saying, we're not going to do that. Yeah. So in that sense, you know, they, they've lost a lot of funding because of that. So, mm -hmm. you know, at a federal level, things like that are affecting the states. Right. And I, I kept close watch on a lot of the Planned Parenthood uh, situations that were happening, like in Mississippi, um, Missouri was a big one this year where they were no longer going to fund unless pretty much these doctors were committing legalized sexual abuse is what I would like to consider it. Right. And that's not something that needs to be even a thought in somebody's head. And what they forget to focus on, and I don't know if it's like this in Delaware, but what they forget to focus on is that Planned Parenthood offers – a lot more services than just that particular service. I mean, just for women's health care in general. Yes. And that's a shame that it seems to be, again, one of these situations that are going backwards. But we are seeing this quite frequently. And obviously, right now, I would rather people focus on the next election and who they are voting yes. in and learning about the candidates, whether it's local, state, or federal candidates, only because I know impeachment is just the thing in in their mind right now it's on tv it's a shame that more people aren't seeing it only because the normal news networks are not showing it right now because obviously it's about advertising and you know i i would like to get your take on how it's possible that any common person, any common citizen that has some kind of logic and some kind of of idea of what is right from wrong can sit here and still back not only Mr. Trump, I don't call him President Trump, but not only Mr. Trump, but the senators and representatives that are backing him. Right, right. I mean, do you hear any conversation about this at all? Um, so at the doors, a lot of people bring up the national situation and the impeachment and Donald Trump, um, you know, and we try to, of course, point out like, well, here's what we can do at a state level, um, you know, because, uh, you know, not only am I running for a state mm -hmm. office, but, you know, I, I, we're not going to, there, there's nothing we can do that's going to make Trump tomorrow turn into a wonderful Democrat. With progressive. Listen, it, it didn't make him a wonderful person back in the 80s. It's not going to change. Right, him now. right, right. Um, so, so, you know, um, what we, so we try to focus more on the state, but, but, you know, getting to the Trump administration and the impeachment, you know, I will say this, and this hasn't, you know, I'm, I, I am, I am very critical sometimes of both parties. And, and I'll say this, our, our two party system in so many ways is failing America. Mm -hmm. um, it leads to a kind of a sports team mentality of my team versus your team. Mm -hmm. It leads to people digging in their heels. Um, and I think that's a, a part of the problem. You know, you see that on both sides. Right. Um, now, now, with that being said, your point is extremely valid. I mean, for example, the Republican Party, you know, and, and its leaders and, and, and the Senate and Trump, they're essentially saying there's no evidence supporting mm -hmm. the impeachment, but we're not going to allow this evidence to be admitted or witnesses to be put forth. And I think, how can anyone not see the, 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 it, it boggles my mind. It boggles right. my mind. And I'm very surprised that Justice Roberts hasn't said, listen, you set forth these rules. Yes. You need to start following them 
and 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 address it to both sides because when they're not seeing evidence and they can claim they don't see evidence, it's because 21 Republican senators left the room when during the trial they're supposed to be on the Senate floor, right. and nothing is being said about it, and that drives me crazy. But I I don't want to focus on on the negative because I could tell you I could go on for hours about right. that, but I want to concentrate on your platform because mm-hmm. people essentially don't understand that the state governments aren't necessarily the same as the federal governments. I think there's a lack of understanding. Yes. You know, you don't take civics and global like you took when I was in school. You don't take a government class. You mm-hmm. take history class, but you don't necessarily take an actual government class anymore like we used to. So I think there's a, a, a lack of education there. So let's talk about your platform and what you expect to to execute when you get elected. Right, right. Yes, and that's a big question. I mean, of course, you know, I would love to step in my first day and wave a magic wand. Um, but but some things that are very important to me. Um, one thing that's important to me is cannabis legalization. Mm-hmm. And actually, I do not use cannabis. But um, the thing is, we waste so many resources, police resources, court resources, mm-hmm. um, and even in Delaware, we've made some strides with medical marijuana and with decriminalizing um, a certain amount of marijuana mm-hmm. for personal use. But still in Delaware, half of our drug arrests are marijuana or uh, cannabis related, and that's mm-hmm. such a huge waste. Also, we have so many people out there who use it for medical purposes and who need it for medical purposes, and a lot of those medical purposes are not approved under Delaware state law. Mm-hmm. Um, so I believe that they, they, they should be able to use that. You know, you can be put on all these pills with chemicals in them, but you can't use a plant that grows out of the ground. Right. Um, Another big thing for me is records expungement because we have so many people, especially people of color, who are either in prison Mm -hmm. or they're out of prison, but they have records and they can't find meaningful employment. Right. Um, Something else I'm passionate about, especially as a former educator, is reforming how we fund our our, our schools. We've Mm -hmm. got to get rid of the referendum system, which is big in Delaware. It's Mm -hmm. disastrous. We need to, and this is something my opponent opposes, in Delaware, we have 19 public school districts for such okay. a small state. Wow. Um, two of those districts have one school each. One of those districts has two schools. Several have four. 11 out of the 19 have school districts in the single digits. It's mind-boggling. I, I've All never st- heard of a structure like that. No, no. And our, to be frank, our administration is so bloated. In the last 25 years, our administration has increased by over 80%. And I've seen it with my own eyes. We need to cut the administrations. We need to consolidate our school districts. And we need to take that savings Mm -hmm. and put it towards our teachers and towards our students, especially Mm -hmm. special needs students Mm -hmm. and especially universal pre-K. Right. Now, I know up here, and and also being a former teacher, and I love that we can both connect on that level, I know here, like you said, there are some districts that have, like, three administrators. Then you go to another school district, and they have, like, 16, and they're making tons of money, and I can tell you something. They're not doing their freaking job. They know somebody. That's how they got there, but they're not putting that money towards the teachers and towards resources that the students could utilize and it doesn't make sense yes and and i'll say this you know from working in education i also i knew some many wonderful administrators Mm -hmm. but i also knew administrators who to your point and to be frank and this isn't always popular to say they got there because they knew somebody absolutely I, i have a friend who taught and he begged and begged. He taught in a vocational school. Mm-hmm. He had way too many people in his class to teach what he was teaching. It was hands-on. He begged the administration, give me another teaching position. They mm-hmm. finally opened one. But instead of hiring a teacher, they combined that teaching position with another open teaching position. And they hired another administrator who was a friend of that administrator. Of it's course. Actually, you know, mm-hmm. it's, yeah. And, and I mean, it happens everywhere. And we're wondering why the educational system, statewide, even local-wide, is not serving the students. That's one of the reasons why I got out of teaching. Mm -hmm. I I couldn't be a part of an institution that wasn't doing what it said it was supposed to do. 
Yeah. And people see this and they see, for example, with referendums, I have two school districts here in my representative district, Appaquinnemick and Christina. And Christina recently, they tried to pass a referendum. It failed. And it's because people see where their money is going and they're frustrated. Right. And, and this, you know, so after that referendum failed, the district said, oh, we got to make big cuts. They cut mm -hmm. over 60 teaching positions. They cut janitorial and secretarial staff. Mm -hmm. They cut curriculum materials. Mm -hmm. They cut um, pay for after school, for teachers doing after school activities. Mm -hmm. Not a single administrative job was cut. No, in so, fact, they get raises and taxes are raised every year. So I, 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 I'm glad that people are starting to pay attention to that because I think that's just super important in this day and age and especially for the next future because it's – it is sad what I have seen over the years in school districts. And at, when I first became a teacher, I was 28 years old, I guess, 27 years old. And it was okay then. But every year it has gotten worse and worse and worse. And it's not serving the next generation. Absolutely. And, and that's a shame because it's – we can't blame the kids. Yeah. We can't blame the kids. We we have to put the blame on how the the actual department and and the institutions are running, and yeah. what matters to them. And and it's sad to see after all these years how downhill it's it's gone. But Eric, I want everybody who's watching and everybody who's listening to know where they can find you. And by the way, guys, just because somebody is not running in your district or your state does not mean that you can't throw your support their way. And that's why I want everybody to make sure that you support Mr. Eric Morrison because I think you are fantastic. So where can everybody find you, you, Eric? And, and, and if I may, real quick before I answer that, you know, uh, something that's very important at a, at a state representative level is constituent services. So you're mm -hmm. talking about things like filling in potholes, repaving roads. And mm -hmm. I want people to know that I know that. And what we've been doing since we've been campaigning, and I have a big spreadsheet we have been helping people with that as we've gone. We've helped, we've helped repave roads, put in potholes, uh, or fill potholes, put mm -hmm. in potholes, yeah, fill potholes, um, clean out tax ditches. Mm -hmm. We have helped families work on getting records expunged for their young sons. Mm -hmm. we, have, um, we have actually worked with Newcastle County government to help two homeowners stop their homes getting foreclosed on. And wow. that's a, a, a big thing because they owed back state or county taxes. Mm -hmm. We have helped uh, senior citizens get signed up for programs. So I do want people to know I know the importance of that, and we're already doing it. I, you um, know what? I love that you bring that up because uh, Matt Silva, who was running for uh, municipal council here where I live, he, he was on the show along with a few that were running for the school board of the township that I live in. And he brought that up. He's like, as as a local councilman, you know, fixing sidewalks, fixing potholes, like that's that's my thing, because in the grand scheme of things, it may seem little to people if they think about it. But at the same time, if you're fixing the sidewalks, then people will be. And this is how he explained it: people would be able to get out more, walk more, creating a safer community because there are more eyes watching. Yes, yes. And and I think. If people changed their perspective and looked at how those little changes actually could affect the community for the positive, it would be right. a whole different story. And even when you're talking about, you know, saving people's homes, you know, foreclosures don't help anyone in the end. Mm -hmm. They, you know, for they, they, they help the people, banks. They help the banks and they make people's property values go down. Mm -hmm. They send families out on the streets or in some kind of living situation that's not optimal. Mm -hmm. They can they, – they lead to all – you know, ruin credit, all kinds of awful things. So, you know, even things like that, they're big things. Um, and to your point, you're right. And, two, you make people – even with a better sidewalk or – another thing, too, we see is that we go into neighborhoods and they say, look at this horrible intersection up here. Mm -hmm. We've got a four-way intersection up here with no stop signs. And we have children getting off school buses, children playing, and cars race through here like it's 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 a mm -hmm. you know a, a raceway. Right. So we've helped to get um, um, traffic calming things in there, whether it's a stop sign or speed bumps or rumple strips or or 
things like that. So mm -hmm. that, you know, literally things like that could save a child's life, even yeah. though they seem small. I, you know what, I love that you say it that way. And the fact that normally a lot of state representatives don't do that. They let the local municipalities handle that type of, of work, but you're actually getting your hands in there and working with the local communities in order to get that done, just to improve the, the state and the municipalities all at the same time. Right. So I, I wish you all the best. And in fact, I want to, when the weather gets nicer, I want to come down and knock on some doors with you. Thank you. That okay? would be great. I, yeah. and provided I get to videotape it Absolutely. and we get to do a, a live interview while we're doing it, I would love to do that with you. So, Eric, where can everybody find you and support you? Yeah, so um, we're out there everywhere, but um, you can visit our website which is Eric Morrison for the 27th.com. And that's E R I C M O R R I S O N the number four T H E two seven T H.com. You can find us on Facebook under Eric Morrison for state representative. You can also find us on Instagram and Twitter. Um, so, so, you know, we're everywhere. You can also email us at Eric Morrison for the 27th at gmail.com. Um, and certainly anybody listening, who's in the area, who's interested in volunteering or making a financial contribution, because I'll say this too, um, we did very well last year with fundraising mm -hmm. and 99.8% of our contributions came from actual individuals. For my, for my opponent, only about 34% of his contributions came from individuals. We're not taking money from um, corporate and business political action committees, mm -hmm businesses uh, or corporations, all of that, the fossil fuel industry, when I get in office, I will only be beholden to the people. And I think that's the way it should be. Absolutely. I love that. And for all of you out there that are listening, Eric's information will be in the show notes. And for all of you that are watching, you just saw it scroll across the screen. So Eric, I thank you so much. I'm wishing you all the best, but I am once springtime happens, I'm going to come and knock and knock on some doors with you if that's cool. We would love it. And thank you so much for having me on today. This was a great time. I, appreciate uh, it. I loved it. Thank you so much, Eric. I appreciate it. For the rest of you out there, I hope you enjoyed. Have a good night.